Welcome back to Inside Texoma. Joining me now is the mayor of Seymour, Mr. Ronnie Reeves. We appreciate you taking time to be here with us today. And, you know, kind of making this transition, we just heard from Mr. Whiteside. And interesting note that I was told was that his grandfather was actually the first mayor after Seymour was incorporated. You shared that, so that's pretty cool. So making the transition from, you know, someone who's connected to the first mayor to now the current mayor of Seymour. And I know this is so exciting as we've been saying the entire show, but I'm impressed. Just, I think it's awesome. I had the chance to, you know, speak with you and Mr. Studer not too long ago about this awesome project, and it's, it's great to see it completed, I'm sure. Well, it is, it is good to see it completed. The things that have happened have, have, uh, have happened so fast with that auditorium, with the generosity of Judge Whiteside, and, and uh, but it seems that, uh, to me anyways, that, that in most recent years that, that everything that we've tried to do, uh, the pieces all fall together. Uh, we've had good people taking care of the responsibility aspects of it, and and they've done their jobs good, and and it's been productive in in every facet of things that we've tried to do there. I think that speaks highly. So, do you think it really goes back to the people of Seymour? Because you're right. I mean, it just seems like over the last even maybe 10 years, five years, there's been so many projects that you, it just seems one after another, Seymour's moving forward. Well, the, the folks in Seymour have, have, uh, have based their lives in that community and, and they, uh, uh, their hopes and their dreams are there. And, and with the times being so difficult, we've, we've come to the realization that, uh, that we're, not so, we're, we're not so able to be self-reliant as we once were and, and we need the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so we've been more aggressive in in trying to encourage outsiders to to become a part of us, and and uh, I think they find that that when they do, uh, it's a pretty good little place to live, and uh, and we've got some good people that live there that that are uh, uh, that have good ideas and and work hard, and uh, and these projects like this and and all they're they're proving themselves. Uh, to always come to fruition and, and, and be successful and, and what we believe is that Seymour itself will, will again be successful. That's Absolutely. what we're shooting for. Absolutely. Well, I, I would say your guys are definitely on the right track. There's so, so, much, so many things that have happened. I just think it's amazing. So anything in the future, though, that's already starting to line up? you know, for Seymour because of the, the completion of this. I know, I know it's been fast, so I don't know, you know if there's been a lot of time even because this really just all kind of kicked off. Well, the, the auditorium itself, the, the programs that have taken place there, I think the, the Queeby Sisters Band, I don't know how that happened. Uh, those girls seem to be booked uh, on a yearly basis way in advance and through someone's efforts and I don't know whose, whether it was Ms. Hammock or whether it was Judge Whiteside or a combination of the two for a little town like Seymour to, to have the Queeby Sisters Band come and perform there um, was, a, was a big bonus for us and, and what talented people they are. And, yeah. and uh, even to the extent that I think we had a good number of out-of-town people that came and enjoyed that evening. Which is good for business there, sure, correct? I mean, the restaurant owners. And you bet. If you're you need a place to stay or, or, you know, whatever. So does this go along with even more plans for the town? I mean, looking at looking into the future, maybe hopes of maybe new hotels or more restaurants. I mean, I guess just the growth continues, correct? Well, that's that's things that, that through the economic development and, and uh, uh, that we've been trying to, mm -hmm. to get done. John's been working on it for years, and and uh, it's it's slow. Mm -hmm. It's it's a it's not a thing that happens real fast, and and you have your ups and downs with it. You you're told, yeah, we're going to come to we're going to come to see more, and and they don't, and sure. then the next one comes along, and and uh, but we begin to see things happening, and as he said, uh, and the more things happen, the more things that will happen. Sure, and. Uh, and so we just have to maintain that positive attitude and, and promote ourselves properly and then let people know that, we, that we're not just all talk. One final thought about maybe all the effort that they've put into it that, that you'd like to say to those who have done oh, you know, hours uh, of endless work. Tremendous amount of, of work. Even before, even before my association through the city, there was a lot of work that mm -hmm. took place up there. But, 
but over the past months, uh, uh, since this committee really got together and, and got gung-ho and, and certainly with, with the uh, interjection of Judge Whiteside and, and his, his interest, uh, I don't think there's a shortage of, of anybody that's wanted to volunteer and help mm -hmm. and, and certainly not been a shortage of work that's been done. It's, it's amazing what has transpired there. Uh, the fact that it, uh, that it, it, uh, it was a, a restoration of that auditorium, not a renovation. It, 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 it comes back to the, to the way it was in the beginning, yeah. I guess. Uh, I'm not old enough to know what it was in the beginning, <laughs> but, but uh, it, uh, it looks to be. And, and when you raise up the seat of one of the chairs and, and they've all got hat racks on them, uh, that's not something you see today. So you know there's some history there. And, and, uh, and people appreciate it, and, and people love that kind of stuff. Absolutely. And we're proud of it, and we're proud of the people that have worked on it, and, and hopefully it will grow and prosper as Seymour will grow and prosper. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Mayor Reese, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for, you know, for sharing with us today. And we need to take one more quick, quick break, but we are not done talking about the auditorium in Seymour and how you can get involved and when you can check out that work is still to come on Inside Tech Summer. Welcome back to Inside Tech's Homa. Joining me now with Morris Sis Hammock. She is the chairman of the Star Council in Seymour. And once again, Myra Busby with the Chamber of Commerce. Thank you both so much. And, um, you know, I've been chatting with both of you a lot about, about of course, um, this project and seeing it all completed. And I know, Sis, this has been such an excitement of yours to really see come together, correct? That is correct. We were new, newbies to Seymour, though I grew up in Wichita Falls, and we have moved there as a multi-generational family, and we are very interested in Seymour continuing the success that it's had because now we will have grandchildren mm -hmm. coming up. And one of the exciting parts about the auditorium is watching uh, grandparents take grandchildren to shows there and have things in common that they can go and see excellent music, excellent productions, and not have to leave the city limits. Mm -hmm. And we had kind of an interesting uh, thing happen during our last concert that my daughter was at one of the restaurants before the concert and there was a table of elderly ladies that were sitting all white haired and had had their hair fixed and they were so excited to be out to dinner. And my daughter walked over and asked if they were going to the concert and they said yes and bubbled over with how excited they were that they were able to go out for an evening in Seymour, that they are no longer able to drive mm -hmm. to Wichita Falls to go out for an evening. So something in their hometown that they could go to, they can invite family, they can invite friends to come in. It's a win-win for everyone to have this. And it is extremely important to have music. It just lightens your heart and because it's multi-generational, it's the perfect avenue for a place like Seymour that we can make it a destination place. Absolutely. I love that story. I just love it, you know, that, the, that so many are able. So mm -hmm. something else that's so unique is, of course, the chairs that are actually there. Can you share a little bit about the uniqueness of the chairs? Um, they're just so uh, unique because they have the hat racks underneath. And uh, people don't remember that back in the old days, the men were not, you know, uh, uh, caught without their hats. Uh -huh. And then they had to remove them to be polite, so therefore they had the, you know, the, the unique racks underneath the seats. And the seats are contoured and it just, you know, makes it comfortable even though they're smaller, mm -hmm. they just are more comfortable. And that so. was something you felt was important to keep, correct? Yes. Keep That's original correct. to the mm -hmm. auditorium instead mm -hmm. of replacing them. Mm -hmm. with many auditoriums have done renovations and many have mm -hmm. added padded seating and the more comfortable seating that you're used to in the new movie mm -hmm. theaters. We specifically, as a committee, had wanted to keep those original chairs because that is a part of the history of that auditorium. So going to visit the Seymour City Auditorium is definitely stepping back into the past because you are able to use the original seats, the original structure of everything in the room is the same. We've even been able to restore some of the old graffiti up on the walls in the back that from many generations ago that people would go in and write their names and write little messages. And so it's been a fun part of being able to keep the history. I love it. And real quickly, if anyone's interested in any upcoming events, shows, I know it can be rented out for different things too. 
where do they need to go? How do they need to contact someone to, to see what's coming up and to see about renting? Is there a phone number or something that they can call? Mm -hmm. There's always the Chamber of Commerce, and uh, we are kind of the hub of uh, uh, info that goes out to the, uh, to the world. And uh, so they can do that, 940-889-2921. Um, okay. Well, ladies, thanks again. I really appreciate it. I know there are so many stories I wish we could share. We could just go on and on about all of the wonderful things and all the hard work that has really gone into making this auditorium what it is today. So I look forward to hearing even more and sharing it with all of you. Thank you, Texoma, for joining us today. We hope to see you back here next Sunday morning for another look inside Texoma.